Okay, so this um, I'll call it uh, program will import all the dog pictures and this, and then we'll run it through PSQL. Let me just run this. So it's taking all the dog JPEGs and putting them into my table. No red deleted table, so this is for real. So is it storing just plain byte or is it storing something as a I mean, it's, no, it's, it's, data it's data. actually stored in the raster data type yeah. that posts uh, just has. So it's not really byte A. Uh, byte A would be your, it's your not in a PNG format. Mm -hmm. It's got Post just has its own raster format, so it converts it to the Post just raster format, okay. and then does it. And then the Post just raster can deal with more than large GPs. It can deal with bullet point rasters and things like that. Okay, so it creates this dog table, and it has um, the raster, which is a type, and the file name where it came from. <coughs> Let me just show you a few cute things. You can do. So there's also no um, viewer like uh, QGIS and yeah. I mean QGIS job. has one, but it's still kind of in flux. So, so we kind of sort of uh, create our own here, and it's just nothing but a web uh, interface. Type in my SQL here. <coughs> type to wrong. And that's the doc. That's the Doberman Pinscher, uh, the whole raster. Okay, now with this, I can say, well, what if I only want to see the first band of the raster, of this raster being um, has three bands? RGB color, so each band represents a color. Okay, and it, it will look black and white because it's going to be zero or one value, so whether that uh, the color is turned on. So this is the first band of the uh, dog, and. Uh, you can take two dogs <laughs> and put them together. That's a raw one when people superimpose on each other. So I mean look you can you don't need Photoshop. You <laughs> 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 um, and uh, and I am going to turn my dog red here just by changing my color values. Just by um, I reclass my raster so that um, anything with a value from zero and fifty in band one, I'm going to turn into one fifty, and so on. Okay, and uh, I'm going to skip over the histogram. And now this using the reclass, I can take my raster and convert it to a geometry polygon by saying things like, well, anything that's dark, I'm going to treat as part of the body, and anything that's light, I'm going to treat as outside the dog. And using that, I could get my dog shape. So that converts it to a polygon. I have to show that to you in um, open jump because that output is a 
is a vector. last thing I will do um, and then uh, Regina will quickly show you um, how to overlay rasters on top of uh, vectors and then we should get ourselves upstairs um, soon. Um, food is coming out, there's lots of food. Um, also uh, there, the, I, I believe that there's a book club meeting up there so you may see book club members. <laughs> no, I'm not sure if they're still around. It depends what kind of queries that you run, because generally you have your ge your uh, geometry sliced up enough that you you can start putting things in um, separate boxes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it really the limitation as far as Postgres as far as Postgres is concerned is the queries are um, five four. No, it's five. Simplification or something, or is it just putting a polygon vertex at every raster point? This no, this is just low tech. This is yeah. This so, is uh, just looking at the color differentiation between body of dog versus background. Yeah, and then, this so, is actually spitting out vectors. No, that's is, a polygon. Yeah, it's okay. it's yeah, it's spitting out. So basically, what we did is we said, oh, the dog is kind of. Um, Black. Black. Compared to the background. Yeah, so we said anything between 0 and 120. But there's like thousands of points in that. It's not yes. going to simplify, or do you have functions to do simplification? Oh, yeah, there are yeah, plenty there are of functions, functions to get you know, to clean it up. And so it's basically taking all the solids, like all the things that are one, and mm -hmm. gluing them together to form a polygon. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Okay. So, 10 minutes. Yeah, do it. Oh, okay. So the thing that people normally use master for um, is for doing spatial analysis. So, for example, if you get elevation data, you know, from aerial flyovers, then you can load all the aerial, I mean, all the digital elevation data. And so then you can ask questions such as. Questions such as what's the value at a certain raster, because you can do intersections with raster and um, and vector data if you have your raster in the spatial reference system. So the data that um, MassGIS provides, like all their aerials and everything, they're also in mass state plane, so you can do intersections and ask questions like that. Like what's the elevation at a point? You can also do um, 
more analysis for a particular area, like if you want to know the general elevation, you can do histograms of that area. So it'll, you know, tell you that um, that this is the distribution. So this is the, hist the histogram function that's in front and post just for raster. And it basically says for band one, I want to break that into five bins, five distributions. So I could go, I want to have 10 distributions. And I would get 10 rows of the histogram. And you can also overlay um, rasters with So for example, this point, I took this point and I buffered it and I overlaid it on an aerial. So it basically takes the area that you define. Um, so a hundred meter region. And then it then overlays the point into it. So the aerial data is also available in NHIS if you wanted to load the God knows how much. I don't think it's something like 60 gig when you're done. It's a little bit old mass jazz and it was from Massachusetts. So is there any questions? Is there any way to speed up uh, loading the rasters? Because like, I remember trying to load some stuff before it just didn't take that very oh, to speed it up. long time. Um, aside from, no, I can't think of it. Do, do you know what it is like under the hood yeah. that's causing it to be yeah. so slow? So you tried loading the mass GIS aerials? Uh, no, I was like working with some nape imagery stuff. Yeah, it depends. Like if you chunk it, it's usually faster. Did you do like uh, individual? No, I think I was just trying to jam the whole thing. Yeah, it's <laughs> usually you chunk it. So if you do, um, and things tend to run faster if you chunk it. So let me just show you the example of how I don't digital. Because that's usually the mistake with people. But I mean, like, w what is PostGIS doing under the hood to like sort of index stuff that's causing it to be? Yeah, the last so part. Similar. The last part takes a while because it basically figures out, um, like, if you have, if you, ch especially if you chunk it, you have like a million records, and then it basically computes the extent of the whole thing. Uh, okay. So that's what it is that's taking so long. So if you do, you don't add this dash C and it doesn't do that whole constraint thing, then it just does a regular spatial index. And the index on each raster is really just the geometry. Yeah. So it's really just the, uh, the bounding box. Yeah. It uses the same thing. So did you use the dash C option? Because yeah. this is basically the way I load it. Like if I had aerials or tips or Yeah, you're, and you're tiling it 256 by 256. Yeah. Because yeah. if like, you load it and you load the whole thing, you know, you load the whole thing, yeah. the, the queries are really slow. Yeah, yeah. so like, yeah, that, that was the thing. The, what I didn't like about PostGIS raster is it has like two levels, right? You have like the, the raster yeah. chunk, but then you also have like pixels within the raster, right? Um, well, it's it's still chunked up. It's, um, I don't know if I would call it, because it's still stored as a variable length array. So. And that, that was just like always confusing to me, like why? Why why is there the raster and then because yeah. the idea is that if you're doing it in the database and you're gonna be overlaying it with vectors, uh -huh. then you want it to be sort of on the same size of gotcha. what you normally do. Because then when you do that, like for example, if I had let me see if I go back to the example I had here. So basically what I'm doing here is um, I'm both clipping and unioning, so I'm basically unioning 
smaller tiles into bigger, and then, um, and then I'll resize it. But if you keep it smaller, then you're more likely to. It, it's much easier to work with a smaller, uh, a smaller tile than it is to work with like a five, yeah. you know, a five thousand by five thousand, and then to clip it. Yeah. So that's why you usually do it tiled. Because then you, it's it's the option of you union or do you clip. So so union is, tends to be faster than starting off with a huge thing that has to load up into memory and then clipping it. Exercise yeah. that you want. All right. Yeah. Okay. If you have any more questions, ask for uh, ask them upstairs. Plenty of food. Really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for you vegetarians, I will point out the vegetarian food. There's one that's green, that's obvious. <laughs> but go enjoy yourselves. We'll come up and ask questions by book, whatever. And each of you can eat double since we were expecting 23. <laughs> so go eat double, drink.